we're gonna discuss like my mom's parenting style because obviously there is no perfect parent, but I think my but wait, mom's approach is the best. Can we talk about my mom's though? Like, what are the parenting styles? Is there like a there's four parenting styles? Cash. There's the uninvolved parent. There Ooh. is the permissive parent. Mm. The Authoritative and what I think you are the authoritarian parent. Okay, well, wait, what's the difference? Because they so, authoritative and authoritarian both sound like meanies. Yeah, they do. Like I often get them confused. And I really focus more on the internal. Mm -hmm. Where some people, it looks like I'm a passive parent or not there, but I'm very much involved in like eternal, mental, health, physical. Yeah. So my thought has always been Casey is her person. Mm -hmm. Sammy is her person, Eli is his person. Exactly. What they do, good or bad, does not reflect on me as a parent. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of mistakes that parents make. You know, but I think 8, 9, 10, 11, you start to talk to a kid. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it so easy for me to come to you with things now because it's something that my mom established early on. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that a lot of parents feel that they, they become the authoritative parent because they feel that their kid can't talk to them, but it's you as a parent also have to create that safe zone. You have to establish it early on. Maybe you can watch this with your mama. I know like a lot of your followers are, are younger. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully some of my followers follow you now, um, but watch it with your mom. Say, hey mom, like I kind of, you know, want to talk to you more. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my mom and you guys seem to love our mother-daughter relationship. They so, do? Yes. Do you love it? Yes, I do love, I love it. it. We're too. like besties. I always compare us to the Gilmore Girls because they just, they're so cute to watch. I love seeing them. And so we are going to discuss like my mom's parenting style because obviously there is no perfect parent, but I think but my wait, mom's approach is the best. can we talk about my mom's style? Like, what are the parenting styles? Is there like a- There's four parenting a styles. Castro, like communist dictator style? No, I think I think grandma needs her own, like for it to be named the after whole, her, yeah. Uh, right. Like if there was one that involved um, yelling, at six, starting at six in the morning. Throwing uh, stuff. Yes. Although she didn't really throw stuff to me, but I saw her throw stuff at Juan. So yes. You knew it, like you could get hit too. So you <laughs> it was a watch possibility. It. Yeah. One that tells you not to do um, certain things, and then tells you to do them. Right. Like she, she will tell you to go eat Monda, but will also tell you do to. Do you guys know what Monda? What is save the, the treasure? Like right. 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 I don't know. There. And you're not supposed to drink, but she's the one that gave you your first, like, what was it, yeah. michelada in Mexico? No, I was at a quince. Like, mo you were in Mexico. I was in Mexico. No one asked me. Yeah. When but. You, yeah. Anyway, parenting styles. Tell me what, what they are. There are four parenting styles. There's the uninvolved parent. There Ooh. is the permissive parent. Mm. The authoritative and what I think you are the authoritarian parent okay well wait, what's the difference because they so, authoritative and authoritarian both sound like meanies yeah they do like I often get them confused but the authoritative parent is kind of like what we were discussing in the beginning which is like a dictator parent that just believes that they're always right and they're just very controlling and the authoritarian parent is the one that believes the child should be hurt and tries to take their needs into consideration which, which one which one did you think i was the authoritarian the one that believes that their child needs to be heard and like my that. mom I says agree. that she's like this because of her psychology class so a lot of her parenting does involve some psychology or if not you teach it to me yeah um, i really do think everyone should take parenting classes and not because oh i'm smart or don't know or my parents messed up mm -hmm. i think just anything can help so even if you're if you're doing the hibbity, well then take parenting classes <laughs> because you might, but even if you already have a kid, uh, we can always get better, Yeah. like always. So uh, at UCI, I had a great psychology class. It was my favorite, I got a C too. It wasn't even like a good grade. It was just like, I mean, I passed, it's which passing, is matter, yeah. it matters, right? That's it. Um, but it, it really helped me like see a different perspective on how I could be a mom because in our culture, like mom, grandpa and grandma were very, well, Strict. grandma was authoritative. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's like, yo yeah. mando. Like, I can't, I can't dye my hair a certain color till this day without getting scared. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, she is like that as a grandma. <laughs> if there's grandparenting styles, <laughs> it, that's it. But she's so. also very sweet and kind. And then like, I think it's it's by age group and how you behave. 
if yeah. you misbehave a lot, I think any parent will feel that they have to become like, the authoritative parent at whatever age. Mm -hmm. um, but if they see like, hey, she's responsible, she's cool, she's getting her stuff done, let her be, which is where grandma is now with you. She said, look, you just, like when you were going to Picolandia. Yeah. You be good. I mean, we'll get you what you need. You're a good girl. And, and that's how it's been. Yeah. Me, I think, and maybe you don't remember, but I used to be super duper strict on you when I was younger. Well, I think it was more with school and stuff. But yeah, I, that, school. That's like... But I would let you wear whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Like, you've always kind of make me, let me make my own choices. And now you're mad. Because it was embarrassing. I like, thought you looked adorable. Let me make my own back choices to, the to an video? extent. <laughs> what, what was stripes with polka dots? What was my mom letting me do, bruh? What is that? What was up with your hair? Did you cut it here? Mom. Déjame en paz. I Don't didn't do this rude. to you. You did this to you. Twice she cut her hair. Well, when I told you I wanted to become a hairstylist, <laughs> you, I you meant were it. You're such a paisa. Like this, you should have been born in Mexico. Dice colitas. This is a good thing. You know, do you know I couldn't do this? Now you know, right? <laughs> yeah, we could tell. We were going to Bompton. <laughs> Bro, this is one of the pictures you would find in the in the braids books that they have in Cancun. <laughs> this is her reference picture. <laughs> Book my mom now. Te peiné, okay? Con que? I had two strands of hair. <laughs> two strands of hair. What do you mean que me peinaste? That was the style back no, then but you for see, the Mexicans. That's, that's, that's my mom and I. We're close in the sense that if I'm going through something emotionally, I'm gonna come tell her. But I won't ask my mom to style my hair, <laughs> to dress me, no. I will ask my daughter to style my yes. hair. Like, mija, can you do me a trencita, please? <laughs> Before she was going to like middle school, do you have time to do a braid on me, mija? Like, mom, I'm curling my own hair. And this is like, when oh. I would wake up like at four in the morning to do my hair. <laughs> like, okay, fine. We you then, it's your fault, okay? I'll send you a YouTube link, don't worry. I don't like it when parents think that and, and okay a lot of people could say like oh my god nunca peina la niña or whatever one i like my kids to enjoy their life mm -hmm. i i think some kids are like super cute when they're all done there are some kids yeah. that like could be fashionistas i love that if the kid is happy because there's some kids that are like oh i can't no i can't run i can't play i can't get dirty no yeah. like i want you to come home dirty, dirty like enjoy your childhood that. i'm like oh dang she's she's a healthy child yeah uh, but i'm just not good at doing hair and i really focus more on the internal mm -hmm. where some people it looks like i'm a passive parent or not there but I'm very much involved in like eternal, mental, health, physical yeah. conversations. Remember the first time you told me you liked a boy? When we were in the car? Yes. yes. That was one of the greatest moments for me. And you were scared, huh? Yes, I was like, mom, like, and now, but now we've made it a thing. Every time I do like a boy, I usually tell her in the car, like when we're alone, it's, mm -hmm. our, it's our thing. We kind of figure it out together, which yes. is what I think my mom was saying. Like it, it also really depends on the child because I don't know. I don't think the authoritarian, authoritarian, yeah, parenting works on me because I'm super sensitive and I, I just get discouraged. Like as soon as someone is strict on me, I just get mm -hmm. discouraged. I need, I need the, the freedom to choose. Yeah. And so my thought has always been Casey is her person. Mm -hmm. Sammy is her person. Eli is his person. Exactly. What they do, good or bad, does not reflect on me as a parent. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of mistakes that parents make. If For he sure. gets good grades, that means I'm doing well. If she gets pregnant, ooh, I'm a bad mom. Yeah, mama. they're no. gonna look at me they're, Yeah, no, I, how, you are you and I, I celebrate with you and if there's a problem, then we, then we tackle it together. But I don't let my kids' lives reflect on me. Mm -hmm. That puts too much pressure on the kid. Yeah, too I think much. it's definitely something that happens a lot in our culture. Like, you can't wear certain things because then they're gonna be like, really, her mm -hmm. mom's letting her mm -hmm. do this and right. stuff. Right, I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, what? Yeah, what about it? We yeah, talked like, about it, like, that's what she wants to wear, that's who she wants to be. I think a child, uh, uh, the goal is for a, to, to raise a free, mm -hmm. um, a free person with identity. But if I'm her identity too much, then she's yeah, not gonna have it. Exactly. So even when you were like in the fourth grade and you'd wanna wear this, like sometimes I'd be like, girl, are you sure? <laughs> yes, mom. 
all right, girl, let's go. Like, I'd be like, remember it was you. And then you'd be like, why did you let me wear that? That's what she wanted. What was the point in that? It wasn't only to let her wear what she wants. At the age of four, five, six, you have to give your children a choice. I think authoritative parents make a mistake where they don't allow their kids to choose. Yeah. They don't get to choose their clothes, their food, their schooling, their career. And then when they want to get married, they're going to be like, I don't know how. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How like, do I choose my mom, like, the person for me? And then they're waiting the parents to do it. You can't choose your your kid's spouse, they're mm -hmm. gonna be with them forever. So that that's always been my goal, that by the time she's 18, 19, 20, however, even 16, 17, the choices that she makes, she knows how to make a choice, at least the pro and con list, at least yeah. mental, um, so that she could be her own free person. Mm -hmm. But even then, when I've also come to my mom about things, like she'll tell me her, like what you think, like. Because my mom guides me. She doesn't necessarily control mm -hmm. me. Like when I come to her with a problem, she'll tell me what she thinks her solution is. Mm -hmm. But then we'll also finish with, um, but it's your life to live. Like, don't live it for me. I always say, but hey, that was me. I realized I was different. I had different upbringing, um, different mm -hmm. times. I can't, I can't raise you like you're in your 80s. It, <laughs> like, we're, we're like, it's the 1980s or even the 1990s. It's different now. Mm -hmm. So I have to realize like, okay, she's in a different time. She's battling different things. She's facing different things. Um, there's so many benefits of being in this generation. So remember when I asked you, you were in middle school and I wanted to put you, my dream was, one of my dreams, okay, was to put you in like a Christian school, private school. Mm -hmm. it, had, it could have been any like private school. And you're like, no, I don't think so, mom. And I was like, why, huh? She's like, you know, I don't want to live in a bubble. I want to experience everything like you know or I yeah. this and you gave me that and I was like okay you, you know it was it was your schooling if I had forced you to go to a school and you hated it that wasn't gonna be good for anyone yeah exactly so I was like, All right, you know and I loved public school but then there's like my sister Sammy who does go to a private Christian school and it works so well for her she loves it like, it's good for her it, it benefits her a lot. There's a lot of things that she can do there. It's the Broadway, the, what else did you do, Sam? Mm -hmm. Like just the slime yeah, classes. Yeah, there's so many things at that school that are for her that maybe would not have been for me. And that's another thing parents have to do mm -hmm. is know that your children are different. Therefore, love them the same, but sometimes have different methods for exactly. each. And for H, I think I am more, a little bit more authoritative before like eight. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that the stages of a kid's life, like you can't spank a kid after eight or nine. Yeah. Like, is are they really gonna get it? I think they're smart enough to have a good conversation and be like, hey, that's bad for you. Like, I don't want you to do it or this isn't good for us as a family. If you're older one day, whatever. But right now, you know, but I think eight, nine, 10, 11, you start to talk to a kid. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it so easy for me to come to you with things now because it's something that my mom established early on. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that a lot of parents feel that, they, they become the authoritative parent because they feel that their kid can't talk to them, but it's, you as a parent also have to create that safe zone. You have to establish it early on. Which takes vulnerability. Yeah. You have to be able to be vulnerable with your kid and be able to like allow you to see my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't want your kid to see your mistakes. I want her to think I'm awesome and perfect. That's not gonna help her. What's gonna help her is to be like, oh, I messed up. You know what? I said a bad word. Yeah. I'm sorry. Exactly. I, I say sorry to my kids. Um, I show them like, hey, you know, I shouldn't have done that. It was a mistake and, and you know, stuff like that. And then your kid learns to do that. Um, I, I, my goal, honestly, my goal was for my kid to be able to tell me, and, and it's still the goal, when something is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not at school, and I don't know what goes on in school or at work or with friends. So my goal is not to be chasing after you guys and checking phones and reading diaries. I'm like, that's your privacy. I give them privacy. I treat them as equals, yeah. even if they're not the same age. They are whole people, mm -hmm. right? So I treat them as equals um, with the goal of one day them able to tell me, hey, mom, someone offered me something at school today and I said no, but it was weird, you know? Yeah. Or like, you know what, mom, honestly, my friends do that. I'm telling you, I don't. And then believe you. Yeah. Like, okay, I believe you because por qué? Why is she gonna trust something in me and then me not believe her? Exactly. That's a mistake like, I've made where I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like you 
confided in me and then I got all stressed out and worried and oh my god you know she's gonna do it I'm like wait a minute she just she told me, me. she didn't yeah. get caught so um I, I think that helps a lot and and that's my goal so when you told me you liked a boy I was like oh <laughs> this is so cool <laughs> I remember you were scared yes I was so still, scared still didn't let him like date him full on because it was middle school but I'm like but I'm so happy you told me <laughs> yeah then it made it easier for when I, the time that I did actually want a boyfriend and we were able to discuss it mm -hmm. but like my mom was saying I think that um parents are scared to be vulnerable because they think that it's like um kind of not not that it makes you look like weak. yeah like it, in a sense but it it they're scared that because they're vulnerable their kid will no longer like have that respect for them yeah. or, or they won't have as much power over their yeah. kid. yeah and the thing is I don't I don't need necessary power over my kid because I'm empowering my kids mm. already have power and I'm showing all three of them bring out that power in you that's my goal yeah is to make people that are free that know that they have power that won't abuse that power Exactly. Therefore, I won't abuse my power. Um, but I don't. It, it's it's showing them. It's guiding them. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's tougher because you know what? It's easier to just make your kids do everything, not to explain anything. Why did? Why can't I go? Because I say so. That's like, easy. But that that's it not doesn't necessarily do good. For them. Yeah. For the relationship, for the child, because he's not gonna know why you're not letting him go to a club at 15. Mm -hmm. Tell him why. You know what? I don't think you're smart enough to make the right choice, bro. If yeah. you were, I'd let you go. Oh, well then I should show her. That's my goal. I want to show her then that I'm responsible and I could be trusted. Mm -hmm. And then you try it. And if if and only when they mess up, you're like, okay, that we we can't do that right now. Yeah, anymore. exactly. But at least you gave your child the space to to do it and to test it out and you know then if they do mess up in that case then they'll go to you for it so i've always my, my another goal of mine is to be able to my children to be my friends mm -hmm. eventually eventually it, it's tambien en etapas it's stages you can't be your child's friend at five eight year olds eleven year olds 15 it's growing you're growing mm -hmm. that friendship you're communicating but that also means I have to tell you my stuff. There's yeah. been stuff that obviously I'm wise in what I tell her, but there's stuff that I'll tell her like, hey, you know what? I'm really sad, dude. My friend and I got in a, in a fight and I miss her, man. And I, she's like, oh man, okay. Like I tell her my vulnerable things yeah. so that you could tell me mine. But as she grows, as my kids grow, that friendship grows. So by the time you like have your own family, your own kids, you're living on your own, like you're traveling the world, you'll want to call me and be like, oh my God, yeah, look, like, like mom, you know, your favorite flower, you know? And I do that with her too. So it, it's a goal that you have of not, not controlling your kids. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Anyone that's controlled is bound to like want to break free. Exactly. That, what's that one saying? Like strict parents create the sneakiest kids. Like mm. even if you think that as a strict parent, you're like doing a good job, it's just because you don't actually know your child. That's what I don't want. Yeah. That's what I'm just like, I hope they tell me, you know, before I find out, I'd rather, I'd rather have that. And that's what I've taught my mm -hmm. kids. Like if you tell me, we can have a discussion. If I have to find out, then I'm gonna be hurt by the lie. Yeah, because exactly. You know, kids mess up. Every we mess up, like you know. So if kids are gonna do something and then they say like, "Hey, mom, well look, this is what I did," or "Look, mom, this is what I'm gonna do." Mm -hmm. Okay, let's figure it out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you made a decision. What are you gonna do at 18, 19 if your kid decides to do something? Was well, all right. How do we do it? How do we do it safely? How yeah. do we do it wisely? Uh, because. That's, that's the thing, they're individuals, whether you want to see it or not. They're not an extension of you. And that's what I think a lot of parents feel. Yeah. This is an extension of me, not really. She has her own dreams. Um, and that's what I was gonna say earlier. My dream was something. But then I realized, nah, I still have time to live my own dreams. I want her to live her dreams. Yeah, like this isn't a Disney movie. Like you know how in every Disney movie, like the dad wants their son to be a football player because they didn't make their football career. Yeah. Like no. don't do that, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Like, it, you can't do that to your child. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, something that helps my mom and I a lot is that we say sorry. I know in our culture, it, like there is none of that. They just, moms will ask you if you're hungry and then all of a sudden you made up. Like that's not how it works. My yeah. mom and I, 
as soon as we get into an argument, five minutes later, we're next to each other like, I'm so sorry. So do you want a Starbucks? Yeah, and then we're drinking, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? <laughs> both of us, and it goes both ways. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't make you weaker. It lets your child know like, hey, mom's normal. She's a, a normal human being. Mm -hmm. And that makes it safer for you to be a, you know, uh, so yeah, I agree. And we decided, and this is with all my kids, we're not gonna be mad more than five minutes. Yeah. We're not, no, we're we just don't not. hold grudges. We're not, we can, even if we're not ready to discuss it, cause there's some things where you're like, okay, I'm not ready to talk about it yet, but sure, let's go eat, mm -hmm. Let, let's hang out. I'm not gonna be in a bad mood or I might be a little quiet, but it's just cause I'm pro like, we'll literally say stuff like that. And, and I think that helps because I think the worst thing would be like parents not talking to their kids. Like I see that and I tell you, yeah, we're never going through that. Okay. I do not care yeah. who you marry. I'm going to be there. Like, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to show <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> like exactly. I'm going to be there. The big old hat and you know, whatever. Wearing black, but I'm going to be there. No, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> Imagine all dramatic. But on the contrary, even like when you are ready to talk about it and aren't ready to forgive, you could also say that like, I'm not, my mom and I always do this thing, like I'm not ready to forgive you yet, but I'm working towards it, so let's talk about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I'm, like, I'm in process, I'm, I'm processing it, mm -hmm. give me some time. I just need exactly. some time. I need a little bit of time, sometimes even a little bit of space, but I'm not mad at you. But if you need something or whatever, um, you know, so it's, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that relationship. I'm me truly, too. truly blessed. And I love how I have kids in different stages to enjoy each stage like sam yeah. is eight now and i'm enjoying that stage i'm i'm barely starting the let's talk about stuff let's talk about like serious stuff where i'm like i can't believe i'm talking about this with my kid yeah but it's good i'm not i don't want the world to teach her so i'm i'm in that stage where with eli it's still like sweet stuff so and then with mm -hmm. case it's life it's like oh my god we're gonna do this for the first time all right go you know and i'm <laughs> praying for her but i'm excited for her she's living life so i'm just like those three stages really help me enjoy enjoy my my parenting. Um, Cause, dude, if you guys were all the same age, I'd be stressed. Yeah, that that'd be. I could not. Like, I I, I used to think the gap between you and Sam was too big, and but I'm like, no, no. Like, I am enjoying both. They enjoy each other. When Sam starts dating, hopefully she'll tell Case, even if she can't tell me. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. Moms allow your kids to talk to other people i yeah. know that's scary because you're like i don't want her to have another mom i don't want her to like um love someone more than me but if your child isn't ready to tell you yet don't take it personal it's valid you're scary they admire you they mm -hmm. they care about your opinion they need to like figure it out first and that's okay so i always allowed case even gave her ideas hey like you could talk to her you could talk to her mm -hmm. she's smart she's funny she's been through it you know, if you're yeah. not ready to tell me yet, it's cool. I'm not gonna, I don't get offended. The more motherly figures she has, whether it's her grandma's, her tia, her bonus mom, uh, a cousin, great. It, it, it's a community that raises a kid. So don't get jealous. Don't be jealous of the kids. You're the mama. They're never <laughs> yeah. gonna love anyone the Only way they love you. Only you pop them out. Yeah. And they won't forget it. But if they <laughs> love someone else, like, that's great. But, because that person can give them the best advice. Mm -hmm. So exactly. like, yeah, it's, don't be jealous with your kids. Like, they, they're gonna love you. Even, even with the dad, like, say she tells, or he tells the dad something, and you don't know yet, maybe in a human, you're like, oh dang, I wish she told me. And then at the end, you're like, I'm just glad she told someone. Like, if you really love your kid, do it for them, mm -hmm. and not for you. Cause then, you know, sometimes we can be a little too selfish. Yeah, like take it a little bit personal. Maybe you can watch this with your mama. I know like a lot of your followers are, are younger. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully some of my followers follow you now. Um, but watch it with your mom. Say, hey mom, like I kind of, you know, want to talk to you more. Yeah. Like, you know, exactly. you open the door because sometimes my mistake with my mom, I think, was that I, I need, I want, I want a hug. I want her. And someone told me, well, why don't you do it? Like, oh. oh. Well, that's an option. Yeah, like you forget it's that easy. It's easy to go both ways. Yeah. So I started hugging her and then she became more affectionate. She didn't know I needed that. Mm -hmm. I never communicated it. So if there's something that you need from your mama, 
ask her. She, t believe me, she will be more than happy to give it to you. If she doesn't know how, she'll learn to, so be patient with her. And while we do understand that there is moms that aren't like that, yeah. Um, well, hopefully this video helps you to not become that mom and helps guide you to be the mom that you wanted. Mm -hmm. you know? But if you guys have any questions or would like us to do more videos like this, please let us know in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching our videos. Bye, guys.